based on recent developments, including the former president's announcement that he is a candidate for president in the next election, and the sitting president's stated intention to be a candidate as well, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel. Attorney General Merrick Garland uh, saying there will be a special counsel and uh, that that person will look into not only the documents situation with Mar-a-Lago, but also uh, the 2020 and January 6th investigations. Uh, the former president took to Troop Social saying, here we go again. I thought that the unselect committee on January 6th was a dead issue, especially with the record-setting loss of Liz Cheney in the great state of Wyoming, and likewise felt that the document hoax case after reviewing the Clinton Sox case and the Presidential Record Act was dead or at least dying fast. The Democrat Department of Justice had nothing except Trump haters, so they just appointed a special prosecutor to go after me further. Disgraceful. Went on to say that he's going to talk about it more tonight at Mar-a-Lago. Let's bring in our panel. Fox News Chief Legal correspondent, anchor of Fox News Sunday, Shannon Breen, Byron York, chief political correspondent of the Washington Examiner, and Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist. Shannon, you know, when you look at this, there's one side of it that says the Justice Department's hand was forced if this investigation was going to go forward once the former president declared for president again. Uh, but do you think that this means that they have something if they're going down this road? Not necessarily, but I think not only President Trump's campaign announcement, but the fact that our current President Biden has indicated that he also plans to run again, I think that left the DOJ with very little option. They had to get somebody who's a neutral arbiter into this uh, case. Jack Smith has got a very deep resume. He's a very well-respected guy, um, but he has been involved with political prosecutions before, or prosecutions, I should say, of political figures, including former Virginia. Virginia uh, Governor Bob McDonald, he prosecuted him. There were charges. It was overturned by the Supreme Court, eight to nothing. So he has experience in this realm, both political and legal. Uh, Byron Senator John Cornyn uh, tweeted reaction to the special counsel saying this is an admission of a conflict of interest by DOJ. Now acknowledge the obvious conflict of interest in Hunter Biden investigation and appoint a special counsel there. No double standard. I think it's absolutely right. I think that the announcement today validated the idea that there's a conflict of interest. So if the attorney general has a conflict of interest uh, investigating the president's potential rival, not even his formal rival, potential rival, doesn't he have a conflict of interest investigating the president's son? And, uh, you know, the, to the degree that Republicans, um, even the ones who are getting tired of Trump, think that the president's being unfairly targeted. At least two Justice Department investigations rolled into this new special counsel. The investigation in Georgia, still one in New York, the January 6th committee, possible criminal referrals there. The degree to which Republican voters think Trump is getting ganged up on, even those who are ready to move on, are more sympathetic to him. So let's talk about that, Leslie. Here's a statement to Fox Digital that the former president gave. I've been proven innocent for six years on everything, from fake impeachments to Mueller, who found no conclusion, and now I have to do it more. Uh, it's not acceptable. It's so unfair. It is so political. I'm not going to partake in it. I'm not going to partake in this. Politically, does this all somehow fit into, you know, somehow lifting him up, to Byron's point? I, I, think, it, I think it can help him. You read my mind. Because when you have people out there, there's some people that are on the fence. There are people that are ready to move on. Then again, if he becomes the nominee, the Republicans, unlike my Democrats, they will hold their nose and they will unite and they will vote for whoever has that R uh, on his lapel. And if that's Donald Trump, you're going to get people that even may have been ready to move on that will support him. And some of those people that are on the fence as to whether they're ready to move on. Uh, maybe they're not wearing their MAGA hat, but they still have it in the back of the closet. I, I think this fans a flame under them to support him because it weighs into those conspiracy theories that he talks about, that he is a victim, he is the target of this. All right, meantime, the student debt uh, issue still is a big issue, and now the administration is asking the Supreme Court to take a look at it. Here's Senator McConnell and Kevin Brady. Biden administration decided to insult working Americans by unleashing yet another reckless giveaway that would actually transfer even more wealth 
toward highly educated people who already tend to be more well off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've gone to the Supreme Court to say we need to let the program continue. Two lower courts have said no, you got to stop the program, that it, it violates this constitutional separation of powers, that the executive branch doesn't get just to do what they want to do with the flick of a pen. Um, the Supreme Court has pushed back on executive power a lot, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican president. I'm not sure they're going to buy the argument, which is all these these borrowers are now confused, so we have to let the pre you know program go forward. Well, then, if that's the argument, a president could start any program they want and then say, it's confusing if you stop it now. Yeah, especially if it has money attached to it in Congress. Winners and losers. Byron. My winner is uh, Hakeem Jeffries. It took a million years, but uh, Nancy Pelosi has moved on from House Democratic leadership, and Jeffries' timing and place was absolutely perfect. The loser is Joe Biden, because now amidst all this talk that he had a better than expected, a good midterms, remember this, he lost the House. His legislative agenda is dead. Winner and loser, Leslie. I'm going to take Nancy Pelosi as my winner. Uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, broke barriers for women. Uh, she was there for 19 years and the first female speaker, and uh, she went out with a high. I mean, the Republicans are probably going to end up with exactly what the Democrats had, a very slim a majority in the House. And my loser is Elon Musk, only person I think will go down in history for spending $44 billion to be called a mediocre man-child on the side of his own building and have an exodus of his own employees. Uh, I'm just not sure that's what he paid for or signed up for. All right, Shannon, winner or loser? Oh, Okay, if you like the least popular thing on the Thanksgiving spread, which is cranberries or the cranberry sauce, mm. you are the winner this year. It is the only item on the entire spread that had its price go down this year. Nice. So winner for the cranberries. The losers are everybody who's been trying to get T-Swift tickets. Mm. I might know a few who have spent hours this week. Griff Jenkins is our T-Swift correspondent. Our, he I is. Think. He's who's on it. Fox News Sunday? Uh, Fox News Sunday. We got Senator Tom Cotton and Senator Mark Warner. All right. We'll Thank you all.